This video is actually going to be a little bit different than what I thought it was going to be. As you see from the title, I attempted to read my lowest rated book on Goodreads, which is actually a book that has been on my radar for a really long time and I have intentionally not picked it up because of its Goodreads rating and I wanted to kind of share my experience with you on reading the book and what were my final thoughts of it. I'll get into what the book is in a little bit, but first I kind of wanted to just walk through some of my experiences reading low rated Goodreads books. So I actually just started using Goodreads this year. Previously in the past, before I had a booktube account, I actually had a moleskin book journal, which basically is where I cataloged all of the books that I read every year. And in the back of the journal, I just like wrote a list of like 2018 books, 2019 books. And then this year I started with Goodreads because it's a lot easier to have the accessibility on your phone to just update what you've read and then also just finding new books. So I decided to start using Goodreads. After using Goodreads, I honestly started thinking about books a little bit differently. So obviously star ratings are more important to me now than they were before. And I don't know if that's negatively impacted my reading experience or not, but let me just get into some of the books that I've read this year that are the lowest rated books on my Goodreads and the star rating that I gave them. So first off is Eat, Pray, Love, which has a 3.57 rating on Goodreads. And I gave this book a five out of five stars. The next book is This Love Story Will Self-Destruct by Leslie Cohen, which has a 3.38 star rating on Goodreads. And this is one of my favorite contemporary romance books. And I gave this book, obviously, a five out of five stars. Next is Lady Chatelaine's Lover by D.H. Lawrence, which is a very controversial classic. It has a 3.51 rating on Goodreads. And I also gave this book a five out of five stars. So next is Committed, A Skeptic's Guide to Marriage by Elizabeth Gilbert. This has a 3.43 rating on Goodreads and this book I gave like a three, three and a half star rating. So as you can see from the books that I just listed, obviously the star rating that the vast majority of people on Goodreads are giving these books does not necessarily align with my interpretation of them. The first three books that I just listed have in like the mid to low three star range, which for Goodreads isn't that great of a score. And those are some of my favorite books that I've read this year or just my favorite books of all time. And I gave all of those a five stars. So the lowest rated book on my Goodreads, which I decided to pick up was Sweet Bitter by Stephanie Danler. This has been on my radar for a really, really long time because this is a coming of age story about a girl who's 22, moves to New York City and works in a restaurant downtown, which is totally up my alley. I really, really love coming of age stories set in New York City where, you know, a girl moves to the city and trying to find herself just because I feel like as someone who lives in New York City and came here right after college, I can really relate to people and their experiences. So I purposely have not picked up this book because it has consistently gotten bad reviews and I was a little afraid to pick it up because I usually don't like to pick up books that have like mid to low ratings because I just assume that if the vast majority of people don't like a book that I probably won't like it either. So I ended up DNFing this book. I DNFed it at page 103. So I wanted to get past the 100 page mark. Honestly, I could have DNFed it too early. This book is a little over, yeah, it's 350 pages. I may not have been giving it a fair shot and I totally recognize that. But for some reason, after I was reading it, there was a point where I hadn't read it in a couple of days and I just like really didn't have an interest to pick it up again. From what I could tell in the book so far, I really didn't get a lot of character development with the main character. What I did find really relatable was her experience working at a restaurant, like a very nice restaurant in the city. I have previously worked in the food industry and catering in New York City. And I feel like a lot of like the clientele and the ways that they had service at their restaurant was really similar to what I experienced. So if you've ever worked in a restaurant or in the food industry, then you probably can also relate to this book as well. And there also was a love interest in this book who, I mean, they had, they barely even interacted at the point where I DNF'd it, but there was like, again, no character development with him. He was just some like bad boy and I really did not understand why he even piqued her interest in the first place. Again, I might not be giving this book a fair shot, but I just decided to move on to other books. Hopefully I will find another coming of age story in New York City as they are my favorite. If you know of one, please let me know in the comments down below and I will definitely read it if I haven't gotten to it so far. So at the point where I DNF'd it, 
I like just started to put like little tabs in it because the whole point of this video was that I wanted to share my experience actually reading the entire book that was the lowest rated book on my TBR but it eventually became that I attempted to read it because obviously I didn't finish it but some of the tabs that I put in here so I don't want to read this because it's like the beginning paragraph of a chapter but there would be like parts in the book where it would just be like this really rambly and like esoteric philosophical thing that like just didn't really contribute to the story and my reading experience and they were just I just thought it was so weird and it usually related to food in some way and I don't know if it's just because I'm not a foodie I would have rather the author use that space to actually develop the main characters over just like put in things about um yeah like oregano so and then the next uh thing that I tabbed was this girl was giving the main character advice and she says i'm giving you permission to take yourself seriously to take the stuff of this world seriously and to start having that's abundance i waited for her to go on nobody had ever spoken to me like that in my life and yeah i i just was like that's a like that's like not a deep line so i like really don't understand why that like really hit the main character so hard I mean, I've read so much like spirituality and like self-help material and I just felt like that was like a very like average piece of advice. So anyway, I decided to DNF the book because I get to a point where I'm like reading a book and I just, if I really just don't care about the main characters and I don't have an interest in picking the book up again, I will just put it down. But I did want to actually go to Goodreads and read some of the criticisms for this book just because... I'm kind of curious on like what people didn't like about this book and then I kind of wanted to go into like a discussion on Goodreads itself and let you know kind of my thoughts around it so I guess we'll just start with some of the negative reviews. So what I've kind of been seeing from reviews of the book is that kind of like what I just said that people didn't find that the main character really had any kind of personality all she really did was like make reckless decisions and then fall in love with the like hot but troubled bartender and there's also like a, um someone also said that there's not really a plot to the book which after 100 pages i really wasn't sure like where the story was going and i don't necessarily think that like every book needs a plot but in this case obviously it'd be kind of nice if there was like some direction maybe like at the end of the book if i had actually read it she had like a you know oh this is i need to get my life on track this is like what i want to do but i don't know like I, I just like wasn't really seeing that and i don't know i you know what i just think it's time to take the bookmark out that's always like the final step for me and i hate dnfing books but i'm just gonna do it there you go the bookmark is out <laughs> So I kind of wanted just to have like a broader discussion on Goodreads itself because I've just been really thinking about it because I just started using Goodreads this year and honestly I find it to be really interesting because now when I read books I'm like thinking of a star rating for them and although I did that before when I was using my book journal for some reason it's like more prominent to me now and like what I'm giving like what rating I'm giving each book and also because now I have a booktube channel people like to know what i rate books and i kind of have to give it a star rating aside from a certain genres of books that i decide to not give a rating at all so one of the positives of goodreads is obviously it's a great place to organize your books like what you've read and also adding books to your tbr i think the main purpose of goodreads was not to not only share the books that you're reading or the books that you're interested in with friends or family but it's also to find other genres and books that you may have never heard of and find them through goodreads so i've discussed this on my channel before and i might just like continue to talk about it in different forms in upcoming videos on my channel but being an intentional reader and also like reading for pleasure and finding interesting and unique books to read are very important to me and I've really been trying to understand what types of books I pick up and why do I pick them up in the first place. And I think that Goodreads can be really damaging in the sense that I feel like a lot of times if you go to Goodreads or Amazon or any place that has ratings on a book, especially before you read the book, you're going to let other people's opinions impact your own opinion. And I feel like it's just really hard 
to not let that happen. And even when I go like on booktube and I hear someone talk about one of, you know, a book that I recently read and they say something and I'm like, you know, I never thought about it that way, but now that you say that I can understand what you're talking about. But I think it's really damaging to judge books. I mean, people always say don't judge a book by its cover, but also maybe don't judge a book by its star rating. I don't know like <laughs> really where I'm, what I'm trying to say about this, but it's just maybe popular books, best-selling books, or books that have a high star rating, a high number of ratings, aren't always the books to gravitate towards. And I don't know about you, I'm just talking about my own personal experience once I'm looking up a book and I'm like, oh, this sounds kind of interesting. And I see that not just the star rating, but let's say it has like 500 reviews. I'm like, oh, that it doesn't have a lot of reviews. It must not be a really well known or loved book, which, you know, it just could be because it didn't have a lot of publicity. It had a smaller publisher. I mean, there could be a number of reasons why it didn't have a lot of reviews on the book, but you go to some of your favorite books and they're gonna have thousands hundreds of thousands if not millions of ratings on them and those are the books that I personally am more attracted to but the difficulty is how do I find books that I like that aren't well known I personally haven't figured that out when I do maybe I will create a video of it but I feel like there's so many books out there whether they're by like indie authors or books that are not like published by one of these like giant publishing houses that have like huge publicity and marketing teams behind them and I feel like you know I fall into the trap of reading a lot of the New York Times bestsellers or you know the top 100 books before you die kind of books when there's so many other books out there. I also like don't want to fall into like the hipster thing of like I need to find like the newest book or a old book that no one's ever heard of so I can be like different and weird. It's not like that's not what I'm saying because obviously books just like with movies and tv shows there are a way to connect with people and it's a way to like learn about culture and just yeah bond with other people and share opinions and ideas and obviously i wouldn't want to read all books that no one's ever heard of because then i wouldn't be able to talk to my friends about them or talk to you guys about the books that i've been reading but i also want to read some books that i've never heard of that you probably have never heard of either just so that i can share books that maybe just don't have a lot of publicity around them. So yes, I think that Goodreads can be a really good resource for you. As I said in my last video about finding books that, you know, really spark an interest in you and books that you like, I originally picked this book up because this is a coming of age novel in New York City. Those are two types of books that I really like and this book had both of them in one. So that's why I decided to pick this book up because I thought that there was going to be a high chance that I actually ended up liking this book and Although the ratings have deterred me in the past, I decided to look past them. Ultimately, I'm DNFing this book. Maybe I didn't give it a chance, but at least it was an intentional choice. With regards to like finding books that you actually like, aside from going on Goodreads, which sometimes I'll just like, it's kind of like Instagram because I don't really have Instagram anymore. So I just like will passively scroll on Goodreads and see what like my friends are reading or what books are popular. And then also Goodreads will recommend books to you which are sponsors so obviously like someone had to pay for it to be there and even though i like bash all of those that are like the top 10 whatever if it's within a really really specific genre like the top 10 books if you want to start your own business that's a very niche thing and maybe you do want to read more popular books in that type of genre i like to read books about psychology dating and relationships coming of age novels in new york city those are things that I can look up and like go to the top books in those categories. Also for classics, like even yesterday, I literally did this. I was looking up like the top whatever classics that you have to read. And then I was started thinking about like a classic that I would like to read, which is a classic that kind of has a focus on psychology and mental health. If you have any recommendations, put them down below. But that's probably something that I should be searching for versus just a classic, which is like a very broad genre, but instead narrowing it down so it's like really specific so I can get the classic literature that I want, but also with a theme that is really important to me. So be on the lookout for me reading some books that you've probably never heard of. You have a mix of books that you've heard of, books you haven't heard of, also depends on like what type of genre that you like specifically. But the moral of the story is, don't necessarily let Goodreads ratings, Amazon reviews, or any of that influence your reading. Really just like pick up what you want to read and what interests you. There's a wealth of knowledge out there and books are such a great way 
to learn because they really go in depth on specific topics where I feel like a lot of books can be condensed into the size of an article which you can just find online and read in an afternoon but there are certain topics that you just really want to get way more in depth information about and that's where books are really great to do your learning and anyway that's going to conclude this video i know it was like kind of all over the place but i really just wanted to discuss kind of my experience with goodreads and also like trying to read my lowest rated book and what happened with that i would love to hear your thoughts on goodreads or or anything your thoughts on goodreads star ratings how you pick up books what influences you to pick up books i just think it's a really interesting topic and yeah i just encourage you to find books that you love share them with everyone and actually find fulfillment out of reading but thank you so much for getting all the way till the end of this video i really appreciate it don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and i will see you guys in my next one <laughs>